Hello, how are you? All right, all right. All right. Open those babies up. I'm not going to eat them until I get, because I don't want to be talking with food in my mouth. But uh, oh, Heavenly Father, here we are again, Monday morning and in your glorious presence. And you are just such a wonderful and loving God. We thank you for every good thing you've given us and all the blessings you've blessed us with. And Lord, we ask that you uh, look tenderly upon the people that have needs, both in this church and uh, in our personal lives that uh, are physical or emotional or mental or spiritual needs. And uh, we ask that you respond according to your great wisdom and which will bring the most glory and honor back to you. And uh, open our eyes and our minds to see wonderful things out of your word today and help us to properly and tenderly handle it so that we don't abuse what you have given us. And may you be glorified through this. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh -huh. So has, I was talking to Gene here, but has anybody heard about the emails scandal they found uh, in Sarah Palin's uh, 20... They didn't Zero. find anything. Nothing. Zero. Zip. Nada. Nada. Yeah. Not, not a word. Here, here's a Christian woman wanting to be president, or actually was asked to be vice president, and she has been absolutely barbecued for the past uh, whatever. And now they are saying, even the Democrats are saying that she is, I, I don't like the way they termed it because it, it, it actually makes it, but they said she is probably the most perfect person in human history. Now, obviously, she's not, Jesus is, but to hear even Democrats say that is rather amazing. Rather amazing. They so. say that, you know, why would she want to run when she's already been... Well, that's why, because she already knows. She's vindicated. Yeah, she's, yeah. She's been through the fire. She's, she's been through the fire. 24,000 emails. They hate her. probably hate her even more. Oh, absolutely. Like the ones that hate her are going to hate her more, but at least in the eyes of the people yeah. that have been slamming her without having any knowledge of who she is or what she's just following the mainstream media, or as she says, the lamestream media, <laughs> they no longer can do that. They're going to have to take a stand either on the right or the wrong, and the liars or the truth people. But anyway. It shows up the feminists for what they really are. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. As, as Gene and I came to the agreement on is that uh, the, the only reason why they're doing this is because the Democrats want to be the ones to say, we have the first female president. All right, just like we have the first black. Even though he's not black, he's half black. And I would love to see a ticket of a black and a woman run, then either the black or the woman, whoever is the president, die in the two-year period, and so we would have the first full black and the first, I don't mean that literally, but you know what I'm saying, we'd have the first woman and the first full black at one time. They could never again bring up any of these charges, but just kidding there. He is, Herman King is such a nice guy. He is, he is outstanding in his intelligence. That's right, he's just, good morning, Lil. And uh, then we also have um, uh, the guy on the East Coast, Alan West, that I emailed, and I said, please run for president. That black Retired Lieutenant Colonel, what a smart man, it just, he's a Christian, he's just, he, he understands the times we're living in and what we need to be doing, and I, I, you know, obviously he's not going to because we would have heard a peep out of him by now, but, you know, I actually emailed the guy after hearing him speak and I said, you, you need to run. I said, you know what, you, you would be a, <coughs> the what? Gary Johnson, the Libertarian, I saw him on Stossley and like, he's for choice. Yeah. Oh, no, he's out. Is he a black guy? No, no, he was the oh. governor of New Mexico for two terms. Oh. Really yeah. Yeah. oh, no, 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 no. You know, well, if they legalized marijuana, I, I couldn't care personally. You know, it, it's an herb of the, the field, and yeah, I'm kidding, of course. But um, uh, anyway, I, 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 the abortion thing is what settles it with me. Gay, gay rights and abortion, those two things, we need to have the moral stand. The drugs, yeah, you know, I got to consider what, you know, what the precedent is and why. If it's for legalization, for actually, marijuana actually has medical properties that they don't release, you know, and so I'd have to think that one through. I, I uh, well, that's right, so, some of them do. Oh, really? Yeah. Here in Florida? Right here in Florida. Oh, I had no idea. See, it's and. A little, it's, it's, it's a little pill that looks like a marble. Like huh. a, and we give it to stimulate appetite, especially in cancer patients, wow. all huh. the time. I had no idea. I had no at idea. The hospital. Yeah, it does. It has a lot of beneficial uses. Um, one of the things about drugs, though, illegal drugs in particular, is you know where it says in the Book of Revelation it talks about the sorceries yes. that people commit. Yes. The word there is pharmacia. Yeah. 
Yes. And that means that, yeah, wow. it's, yeah, pharmacy. In other words, pharmaceuticals, which change your, alter your perspective, LSD and all these things. So that's something to keep in mind is that, that the root of that word, and I'm not saying that that's an appropriate translation. I'm not a translator, but the word does come from the word pharmacy. And so, oh yeah, absolutely. I found frying pan in Leviticus about a week ago. Frying pan? The word frying pan. Oh, in which which translation? It was my at home. It's my uh, it's called the New Analytical. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Oh, that would be griddle in the NIV. But it wasn't even in. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Well, still, I mean, I I couldn't believe that. that Frying pan. It was in the chapter two where they're talking about how to pre present the offering. The offering, the meal offering. Yeah, in the NIV they translated griddle. I have no idea what they say in this one. I've read it how many times? And let me see real quickly. See as we brought that up, and then we'll get started. Hello there, Pat. How did you like that spot yesterday? Hi. Oh baby. Oh baby. All right. Did any of you watch Boston Springs this morning? I did. Yeah. yeah. Did you see the thing on there where Chris Matthews from MSNBC no. said all Christians are a bunch of backwards people? No. And so are we need to start sending out our emails. We need to start getting that guy kicked out. Absolutely. He needs to go. I must have been walking when that happened. Yeah, you just, well, I was, we were, Diane was walking out to the garage when it came on and she said, come on, we need to go. I'm running late. Yeah, I didn't hear it, but I did yeah, hear that. The morning before they had Jonathan Morrison, Father Jonathan. Yeah. Was, uh, oh, I think that guy is Christian. Insane. Who? Insane. Matthews? Oh, he is. He's nuts. Yes. He's a nut job. He is a nut job. <laughs> if, if you're for, if you're okay with guys who send nude pictures of themselves to young women. No, yeah, right. Can you imagine he still wants to stay? I mean, he has no shame at all. He has, he, he's sick, but he needs to step down. He is not somebody that belongs in the United States Congress. Actually, he probably fits much better than we'd like to. Boy, I, absolutely. Okay, Dave, the word in the uh, New King James Version is a pan, but it has it footnoted as a flat pan or a griddle. It's Leviticus 2.5. It's a flat pan or a griddle. In other words, just something you throw a waffle down on to, to cook it. And uh, um, please, anybody that was there last night, don't tell Ken how absolutely nice it was. Maybe he won't come anymore. And uh, you, got, we have found, we have found the spot. I'll never go to Siesta Key Beach again. Never. I'm done. I'm done with Siesta Beach. It is. It is so absolutely beautiful there. And you know what? I had no idea it was there. No, I don't. You know, I was having a sign made for the tree. Uh, yeah, well, we've got plenty of trees to put a sign on, believe me, and I'll put it up. Nobody will see it there. It'll be just something that somebody will have to actually notice. You make a sign, I'll do it. You will not believe, if you ever come out again, you keep up with that baseball and we won't see you. But I got, well, I'm just saying, he's Mr. Baseball now. It's the season. But I got to tell you what. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. that was I, it, was, it was so astonishingly beautiful and so breezy and cool where we were. It was like a little bowl in heaven, wasn't it? I'm tell, it was unbelievable. Unbelievable place to have a service. I heard the message was pretty good too. Yeah, I heard well, the pastor was goofy. Yeah, pastor's a real goofball. <laughs> and I, I got to baptize a little girl on afterward. Oh, Woohoo! Daughter, I wish Man, I been there for that. It was really nice. It was really nice. Yeah, see that? You, you miss a week, you miss a lot. Oh boy, bring them out. Tell them. Tell them. I, I, I'll dunk them right away. We'll just. I, I may not bring them up, but I'll put them down. Okay, there you go. Okay, today we're in Genesis 26. Whoever gets there first, please start reading. Now there was a famine in the land, besides the earlier famine of Abraham's time, and Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. Okay, does anybody remember what the name Abimelech means? I explained it to you and gave you all the breakdown. Break it down yourself. Somebody break it down. Abimelech, yes. Ab, Ab, father. father, and then the I shows what? I shows possession, my father, and then Melech means? My father, Melech. King, yeah, my father, the king, okay, Abimelech, Abimelech. All right, there you go. And um, have you noticed there's another famine already? And it seems like the Lord is ordaining how this story unfolds. If you look, and you know, there's there's these famines, there's these earthquakes, there's these tests and trials of nature, 
And he is working out his plan and his purpose, which is part of what I spoke about last night, the two types of evil. There's, did my mother pay attention to the sermon last night? What are the two types of evil? Natural, natural evil and, uh, and mo mo moral. moral evil. Natural evil, the evil of suffering, such as well, famines, etc. She did pay attention. And then moral evil, the adulterous woman eats, she wipes her mouth, and she says, I've done nothing wrong. There you go. Moral evil and natural evil. So um, that's from the book of Proverbs. Um, the, the wife thing, not the uh, natural. Okay, anyway, please, uh, verse 2. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you and bless you. For you and your descendants I will give all these lands and will confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. Okay, now there's a famine, but the Lord specifically tells him not to go. Okay, so once again, we see that not only uh, is there a famine, but he's ordaining the path that they follow. So you can just see how this goes throughout the Bible. If you look at how nature is being used and the directions the Lord gives them, sometimes they leave, sometimes they stay. But it's all in here because he's writing his story into words so that we can understand his plan and his purposes. Okay, go ahead, four. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and will give them all these lands. And through your offerings, all nations on earth will be blessed. Where does that come from? Remember, we've brought that up a couple times, that particular verse. Offspring. Your offspring. Right. Where, where is that mentioned from? That's okay. No glasses. I got a pair, right? Oh, you need a pair? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. No, here. I'm not yours. No, not here. Um, uh, where does that come from, that particular... You mean back to Abraham? Yes. He's, he's blessing... Back in Abraham, he blessed him in uh, uh, Genesis 15, like verses 5 and 6. He said, and now he is confirming again the covenant through his son Isaac. All right. So, uh, what's that? Not in Numbers. No, not numbers. I'm go, go back to Genesis 15, and we're going to find it. Re no, 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 that's all right. We would just want to make sure that we understand that this promise is the one that is going through the chosen line. Genesis 15, and it's verse, uh, yeah, 5. Then he brought him outside and said, Look now toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to them, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. And then he goes on and he says that I, again, I believe maybe either in 18, might repeat it there, or uh, and then um, again in maybe 22, we're going to see here. Uh, okay, in 18 there's the promise, uh, uh, since Abraham shall surely become a great nation. So he is repeating it there. And uh, then in 22, let's see if we have it there. I don't know. 18. Uh, 18. Okay, there you go. Um, start with 17. Blessing, I will bless you. Multiplying, I will multiply your descendants, the stars, as the stars of the heaven, as the sand which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. In your seed, all the nations on the earth shall be blessed. Okay, now when he said in your seed, you could think, well, it's the sun that's coming. But by saying this again to Isaac, we know that it's not Isaac. He's promising it future still. All right, so you see, I just want to make sure you're following the progression of what God is doing. And um, Paul uses this, I think it's in Galatians. Um, I, we've brought this up before. Let me see if they give me a footnote so I don't have to go. Uh, yeah, Galatians 3.8. And um, Paul will use the Greek translation, I believe, of this to make his point that it is specifically speaking of Jesus. And I'll read it real quickly here. Ephesians, Galatians 3, and it says, um, but indeed, uh, that's, oh, I'm in 4. It always helps to be in the right chapter. Let's see here. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, in you all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. All right, so then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. And he also goes and he says in verse 16 of Galatians 3, now to Abraham and his seed which we're reading again to Isaac, were the promises made. And he does not say, and to seeds, plural, as many, but as of one, and to your seed who is Christ. So there's one that's coming, and we now know it's not Isaac. It's still coming through Isaac, but Isaac is not the promise. Okay, um, what are we? Five, please, go ahead. Because Abraham obeyed me and kept my requirements, my commands, my decrees, and my laws. Real quickly, he's saying that uh, uh, not only... He, he's saying that this is was promise was made, but Abraham kept the promises or whatever he just said, the, um, kept my charge, my commandments, and my statutes. Saying because he did this, this is going to continue. It's kind of like saying, don't forget, you need to do the same thing.